Team 10 working to get results following our investigators reporting on wire transfer scams targeting seniors. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Wale Aliu. New proposed legislation could strengthen protections for elder financial abuse. Investigator Melissa Masiha joining us now. Melissa, you have been reporting on this topic for months now. Yeah, and I've spoke to several people. It really is heartbreaking to hear their stories. Stories like William and Ave Bortz helped push this legislation forward. Now, according to the bill's author, the bill would clarify the bank's role in these scams. So this was to celebrate my dad's birthday. Ave Williams and her dad, William Bortz, showed us around his new place. That's my father and mother and me. And I see you right there in the and middle. And this is our hardware store. Quite a change from last summer when we met William and his wife, also named Ave, in their Poway home. At the time, they were coping with the loss of nearly $700,000 in an online scam involving wire transfers through their bank chase. I felt very violated. Back in 2021, William got an email from what he thought was Amazon. It was about an online purchase he said he didn't make. He called the number on the email and spoke to whom he thought was a company representative. Turns out it was a scammer. The scammer was able to remote access his computer and convinced him to wire money on four separate occasions to fix the problem. The scammer was persistent. Calling my parents multiple times a day, starting from 6 in the morning to late in the evening. William said the scammers coached him on what to say to Chase Bank representatives, but he said nobody at Chase questioned the hundreds of thousands of dollars being sent to Hong Kong and China. Instead, they asked me if I would consider being a client of their private banking operation because I had assets to invest. Since that interview, the new place William and his wife now call home is Villa Lorena Senior Living. It's an assisted living facility. So we're going to go this way. Ave, not here for our interview as she deals with ongoing health issues. William is grateful for the support he's getting here. So this gives a lovely community. And now from lawmakers, a bill making its way through the legislature would make clear victims of financial elder abuse can continue to hold institutions accountable when they should have known of the fraud but negligently assisted in the transfer anyway. We just think this bill is so important to be able to send a signal to banks that they've got to do a better job of educating their managers, their loan officers and people that deal with the public every day. State Senator Bill Dodd from Northern California is the author of SB 278. Why is this coming up now? Maybe why not before? Maybe why not, you know, next session? Or the seniors that you interviewed, uh, it was so staggering. And when that came to my attention, um, you know, it made it just more important to get this done. The FBI reported seniors lost more than $1.7 billion in various schemes in 2021. That amount likely higher now. Pushing approval of this type of legislation is absolutely something is needed because the banks are not going to change unless you force them to change. Williams' daughter said she's spoken to both her parents about scams, but this one was sophisticated and fast. She believes that's why banks need to be a part of the solution, not the problem. The scammers are counting on the fact that the banks won't question it and will just let it go by. Team 10 reached out to Chase for a comment about the legislation. We got a response, but from the California Bankers Association. It said in part the bill was well-intentioned, but they don't agree with it. Their statement goes on to say it would fundamentally change the way banks and other businesses engage with seniors by establishing a de facto fiduciary conservator relationship. It said that financial institutions will be forced to make very conservative decisions about transactions initiated by seniors, and this may lead to processing delays that will impair anything from the most routine financial transactions to time-sensitive real estate transactions. The bill will be heard in the state Senate Banking Committee Wednesday. Ave and her dad are scheduled to testify. If it helps us create positive change by yeah. speaking up, by being the voice for people who haven't had anyone to hear them, let's go. I'm in. We're in. The boards have an ongoing lawsuit against Chase filed in federal court. Chase has previously told Team 10 that it provides several tools and resources to help consumers on their website. So Wale, something I'll continue to follow here as this process moves forward. Great reporting, Melissa. Looking forward to seeing where this bill goes. Thank you so much.